so in example zero, the introduction to L'Hopital's rule, um, I more precisely state the hypothesis and the conclusion of L'Hopital's rule, both for the indeterminate form zero over zero and infinity over infinity. Additionally, I reveal five other indeterminate forms that could be rewritten in the form zero over zero or infinity over infinity. So in total, I show you all seven indeterminate forms where you're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. Um, yeah, so definitely check out that intro video, example zero, yeah? And uh, in example one through example seven, I will give one problem for each of the indeterminate forms. So we'll um, look at uh, each indeterminate form in a video dedicated to each one. And then uh, we'll finish with example eight, uh, which has a fun problem that involves multiple indeterminate forms as you go through it. Now, whether you're in college studying or in high school studying calculus, um, watching these videos should be sufficient for all of your L'Hopital's Lopital, rule problems, yeah? Cool, all right, or L'Hopital's rule troubles. Anyway, uh, let's get started with the zero over zero, which is probably the simplest indeterminate form. And I've already showed you an example of this in the intro video, but uh, let's do one that's dedicated to it, yeah? Cool, and that's this problem here. Of the limit is x goes to zero of ln of one plus x squared, over x. If we try to evaluate the limit, we see that you'd get the natural log of 1 divided by um, 0, and we all know that the natural log of 1 is 0, so this is 0 over 0. And so then we know that we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, remember, L'Hopital's rule said that uh, if you take the limit as x goes to a of um, f of x over g of x, and uh, you find that that is equal to some indeterminate form, and I'll just write ID, then you're allowed to, remember I have done this more precisely in the intro video, um, just reminding you. So what you're allowed to do if you get an indeterminate form, one of the seven, is that you take the limit again and evaluate it at f prime of x divided by g prime of x. Notice you're not using the quotient rule. You're just taking the derivative of the numerator uh, divided by the derivative of the denominator. Um, given that you had a numerator divided by some denominator. Yeah, cool. Now, if somehow this is an indeterminate form, then you do it again. But let's say that you found some limit L here, so the process terminates when you get to a limit. But yeah, if you keep doing this and you get an indeterminate form, one of the seven, you can do it again until you finally get a limit. Yeah, cool. All right. And this first um, example, we're just going to have to do it once and after the zero over zero, that is, and we'll be able to find a limit. So doing it once, of course, means taking the limit again and evaluating at uh, the um, derivative of the numerator and then uh, divided by the derivative of the denominator. Now, the numerator, ln of 1 plus x squared, has derivative 1 over uh, 1 plus x squared, and then by chain rule, times 2x, right? Okay, cool. And then the denominator, x, has derivative 1. So there we are. And um, I'm only rewriting. I'm not doing anything else. But yeah, now we should be able to plug in 0 and get a value. So um, if we just clean up what we just did, we know that we could write 2x divided by 1 plus x squared. And if we plug in 0, that is evaluate the limit now, we're going to get 2 times 0 divided by uh, 1 plus 0 squared. I probably don't even need to bother showing you this step, but yeah, you know that you get 0 over 1, which is not an indeterminate form. It's equal to 0, so we are done. So the limit here is 0. Now, there are a lot of harder examples to come, so keep watching. Take care.